This company, McPowell, they took and sent me this laser, wanted me to do a review on it. I was figuring on, you know, it's a five watt laser. I've already got several. I got a 20 and a 36 watt laser, but I figured what the heck, I could do a review on it and it comes with some great extrusions and some stepper motors and had really not planned on keeping this uh, laser. So when we went over here to my dad's house, we started putting this thing together just to see what we had. Uh, the finish and all the parts were like absolutely perfect. The uh, packing on the machine was great. The instructions were not the best. So a couple little tips when you're putting this together, the front and back are the two shorter rods. So then you want to put those, um, you know, in front of you and then put the longer ones on the sides. Then that way the gantry can slide onto the machine. Uh, once you get the gantry slid onto the machine, you put on the four legs. The instruction says to put the screw with the gasket. Well, the gasket is a metal washer. And so that metal washer will catch on the belt. You put the belt on the front and leave a little bit of hanging out. You screw the screw in with the washer that, you know, kind of clamps the belt and then you can leave all the slack in the back so it's really not noticeable but then you can grab it pull it kind of snug and then tighten the screw up i uh, did not trim that off that way if you ever need to tighten the belt up again you'll be able just to loosen the screw pull the belt and it will tighten right up on the front left corner there is a little connector down there it's not in the instructions to connect that but it's pretty self-explanatory you'll see a wire connector um, with both ends of the wire right there just plug those in together now I was talking while I was putting this together and really wasn't trying that hard but I noticed uh, on the camera it was 19 minutes from start to finish also when you put this front control panel on be aware of the wire because I just kind of stuck it up here screwed it on and then when we were running the machine I kept noticing the wire was trying to get in between the gantry there uh, I took the panel back off and untwisted it so that that wire was nice and straight and then it ran very smooth now a couple of things I want to say about this little machine that um, you know was really nice you know I mean the instructions not the best but you're only going to do that one time and it was good enough to get this thing together but this front load control panel, you got an on off button, you got an emergency stop, you got a reset button, you got a key. I really like the key that you can take the key out in the on or off position. Even if you leave this on, nobody can come in there and just start the thing because you have to send a signal to it with a computer to get the laser to fire. But also on the back right there, you can kind of see a little metal sticking out. That is a on off switch for the flame uh, sensor. And if you have a window that you're using this by for me and my shop in the afternoons, the sun will come shining in my door and will hit that flame sensor and will kill my burn. So with this, I know I can flip that switch and be able to burn even in the afternoons during the summer. So that's something that um, they're starting to get more popular, but the other ones uh, have been out for a while do not have. So overall, you know, the machine went together very easily and then they had also sent me a honeycomb bed. Well, I pulled the honeycomb bed out and I mean, it looked really sharp, you know, the little corner pieces, um, you know, on some of them are real cheesy looking, but this thing had your little push downs that are in the middle of it right there. It came with the push pins. I see, you know, there's all kinds of 3D files for people trying to print these push pins because they don't come with it. It also had some little stick on feet to go on the bottom of the honeycomb so that it wouldn't slide around and would hold together. So all in all, I mean, you know, I was highly impressed with it. And also it looked like there was maybe a um, non-glare, non-reflective type coating on the bottom of that uh, honeycomb bed. So for some reason, I was thinking that these little enclosures would just be kind of a cheap gimmicky type thing. So I didn't have my hopes up, uh, but they sent it to me. So I thought I'd check it out. Well, this thing actually, once you get it together, it's rock solid. The uh, material is like a thick uh, canvas type. And we put this in and we was running it in the house. It comes with this little fan. It's like a four inch fan and it's got a USB connector. So it just hooks into a USB port right there on the side of your laptop. Or you could plug it into a cell phone charger if you want. And it 
sucked out all the smoke i mean this thing there was like no smell inside the house and we ran this for a couple of hours and with no issues whatsoever now i want to say because they're not in the instruction book but this particular machine it has wi-fi it's got a app you got the mks uh, laser and they have it on the mac powell's website on how to set it up it wasn't anywhere in the instructions and it didn't say on you know the box or anything on how to do it so i had to contact them um, and then once they pointed it to me on the instructions you know then i was able to get that set up uh, no problem you just log into the network the password was one two three four five six seven eight and if you know what you're doing you can also then uh, get the ip address and log in from your laptop i uh, operated this from my laptop wirelessly and we also ran it from the cell phone and with that little app you can draw pictures out you can just snap a picture and it'll print them out you know no problem so that is also super nice feature and it basically this thing's got everything but a touch screen on it so after we uh, got the enclosure all put together i started running this is that little gemini logo i'm not going to bore you with just watching it burn i did a test pattern here this is a five watt laser this is from 1000 to 10,000 uh, millimeters per minute you know um, test grid that's in light burn so i ended up settled on 6,000 millimeters a minute at 80 percent power and started burning this little coaster well in the instructions it does tell you how to set the focus um looking at the picture it just for some reason I, I was thinking that you were focusing this right down on the material i've always had a little setting block or something to kind of keep it up i'm like well maybe they had made the shield so that it goes um it's not there's a little piece of orange acrylic it's about three millimeters and the uh, head is supposed to set on there so i was actually out of focus by about two millimeters and this thing still made a super crisp, um, you know, great engraving. And like I say, we were running at 6,000 millimeters a minute for a 5-watt laser. That's just awesome, I think. So then we decided to try something a little bit more difficult. You know, push this little machine kind of to the limit, you know, to say. So we had some 8-inch uh, basswood plywood. Now, again, this is a 5-watt laser, and for me, 5-watt lasers are engravers, not really cutters, but, you know, you've got it there, you're going to want to try it. So I decided to go ahead and uh, do a test pattern on cutting out. Once again, I was still off on my focus by about 2 millimeters, but it did cut out, and I decided to go with about 200, 250 millimeters a minute at um, 8 passes, once I refocused that and um, got it more properly focused, I was able to cut about 250 uh, millimeters a minute and um, only had to do about four passes and my cuts were much cleaner. However, even with this thing being out of focus, it uh, still, uh, as you see here, it was cutting you know, out. It was sticking just a little bit on the test patterns. So we did a little box and the default uh, was set to one or 0.1 on the curve well that gave me a little bit of uh, movement in it so then i changed the curve to 0.5 and it was like a perfect fit it went right in now it wasn't tight to where it sticks together so if i was to have done another one i probably would have dropped that down to a 0.04 or you know even maybe a 0 0.03 but I mean as you see here you know it's cutting out this box you know that's that uh, image which is using the same piece of wood but all this was engraved and cut on the you know Mac Kapow 5 watt and I mean the I did a picture the picture I didn't spend a lot of post-processing time and I just set it to dither and you know it could have done better with the picture um, if the settings was right but I have no doubt that this machine is just printing absolutely fabulous so as you can watch here whenever I lift this piece of plywood up this cut perfectly now this is after I'd added in the second belt and I had also um, you know got it focused properly and once I did this thing uh, 
My problem is now I can't see taking this apart because this little machine is working so great and it's just a nice looking machine. So if you're looking for a you know budget friendly, and this thing's like $200, you know, getting started and laser cutting, you can't go wrong with this machine.